Good morning everyone, it's Joker, and today we are back with another slime video. And dear lord, JP Streams love to talk. Finally ended, two almost two hours after it started, and now we are finally able to record the video. And for two hours of live stream, didn't really get that much information. But we do obviously know who is coming tonight, later tonight, for this next meta. So our first up is the image from the Global Dev Diary from Lara. This is showing a new version of Kleesh, Carnation, Shinsha, Rimuru, and Emils. So it actually was Emils as that shadow character as the live stream teaser, which is our first time seeing him since, what, the first anniversary? So moving just into that. We have a new form of Shinsha. So a new form of Isis, new form of Shinsha. Shinsha is the AoE DPS character summonable for this antagonist meta. Antagonist. And they, uh... <laughs> Let me show you the antagonist meta really fast. They added Primal, or not Primal, but Visions of Coleus, Violet, and Commander Hinata to it. Which then leaves Warrior's Mind Rimuru the other cliche, free-to-play Isis, Clayman, Shinsha, and Galmud. So, mm, yes, peak optimum team right here. But Shinsha, her first skill, 50 points. So not 55, as you know normally one would expect. It is light and dark characters alt damage 100%, and then all targets pierce resistance down by 60. This is a pierce-focused meta. It's also an orange focused meta magic magic orange pierce reminds me of the wielder of magic milam and shinsha that came out literally in this time slot one year ago so i guess they're gonna continue with that theme um light and dark alt damage by 100 percent is restricting there are a lot of light and dark characters in the game don't get me wrong but it's not a generic thing the Pierce Resistance Down is generic. It's a debuff. It's just you need to have Pierce to activate that. Her second skill, 35 points, changes all antagonist orbs. Antagonist orbs. Uh, blue, 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 green. Uh, doesn't care, doesn't care, doesn't care. Yeah, a lot of orange right there, huh? Uh, changes all antagonist orbs into oranges. And then this is a mistranslation. This says increased orange skill point by 10%. It is actually an all gauge increase. That was confirmed on the JP side of the stream. So 10% all gauge increase. A full hand of orbs change to oranges if they're antagonist. Uh, light and dark characters get alt damage. And everyone gets pierce resistance down. She's not a bad unit. Uh, she's just quite limited. Because you have a restriction here on her second skill for her orb change you have restriction here for her alt buff double restrictions i'm not a super big fan of she'll work very well on the team she's meant to work on and then she'll have limited viability trying to make use of her kit on other teams specifically because oranges still are not a good team the last time we got an orange meta was new year's of this year and before that was october of last year for the wielder of magic meta so we still don't have a lot of orange teams to just go around and plug her into. Her alt is an AoE light magic, 320%, and she lowers magic resistance by 15%. So she is the AoE light nuker. She's on antagonist, dragon Akai, hockey, whatever you want to call it, and warrior's mind, which is interesting. Uh, we'll look at all the alt animations on the JP side. So moving on to protector emils. So our first summonable, or actually just first version, of a unit that we can use of Emils. He is the leader, changes all orbs to oranges. So kind of when you don't want to use Emils, you can use Klee, or not, uh, you can use Shinsha, and then, you know, vice versa. So changes all orbs to oranges. Then changes two oranges into rainbow soul of unity orbs. So our first protector that gives us rainbow orbs. Not a lot of them, only two. But this will help him, I guess, give us a bit more skill points and cycle protection gauge a little bit faster. Only a little bit, though, because it's only two rainbows. So 
in a, in a turn when you use a mills, four oranges, two random rainbow orbs. But it doesn't matter because you're getting oranges anyway. Also increases the pierce rate by 100% for two turns, just like Wielder of Magic Millum. And then increases Soul of Secrets skill point increase by 50% for two turns. So this is just a, a power crept version of Wielder of Magic Millum. Because they do roughly the same thing. Because if we look at, I'm sorry, uh, if we look at Millum, Millum is changing orbs into oranges, magic allies pierce rate by 100% for two turns, which this is generic allies, so it's not limited to magic, and then she gives you 40 skill points when you use her. But she was an older version. Uh, Emilis is now in that kind of burst passive skill where he gives you skill points for turn two, three, four, and five. So we're also getting extra skill points off him. He's fine, I guess. But the important part is that he increases damage done by antagonist and exalted champions. Because we, you know, just looking at it, we know that, it, that antagonist is a pretty shit team. Like, these characters really are not super useful here. So by adding the exalted champions force onto his protection... Uh, Exalted Champions is a good team. Two and a half anniversary team. It's still very good. So giving him the option to run both of those is, is a lot better. But again, because Orangers are so very looked down upon, I, I, I'm i not... We're going to really have to test him out and see, but I feel like he's going to give us pretty much the same output that Milam gave us a year ago. And it's honestly not impressive. I, I, I'm not blown away by his kit and because of the restrictions for shinsha i'm not super blown away by her either but yeah, again we'll have to wait and see uh free to play battle unit cliche still only free to play still has more units than isis technically for now uh because we haven't gotten to isis but she is fire she's on antagonist wielder of magic and the flashback beatdown just like every other free to play character her first skill, 25 points, is a special convert for oranges. So we have converting for Kleesh. We have converting for Shinsha. We have converting for Emils. Everybody can convert on this team, which makes it run quite well. And then she also gives orange protection gauge 20%, which is nice. It, it, it's good. Oranges definitely need more protection gauge. And then her second skill changes light character's alt into an orange orb. So she has a single alt swap specifically for light characters, which I'm not a big fan of. Free to play characters have been given either restrictions to the team itself, antagonist, primal demon, uh, whatever, or they've just been unrestricted. And I'm really not a fan of this because right now it's like we're, we've got Cleesh, we got Cleesh who's fire, we've got uh, the Shinsha, who is light, so we're gonna convert with her, and then, like, what else, who else are you running on this team? Who's a light character that's gonna have their alt swapped? It, this, you can't use skills multiple times in a turn, so you're really gonna have to play around with who gets alts and when to really make use of this, or swap characters in and out. And then on top of that, she also stacks pierce power for the team every time you use the alt swap, which this is a burst team. You're not gonna use this skill too often. And then she has a single target fire magic 470 and then lowers guard penetration on the enemies. So, eh, okay. At least she is a generic free-to-play special convert for oranges. We don't really have that right now. We have the ogre slime reamer you can get out of the flashback shop or the zero code shop. And then you have the old, old, old light Hinata who converts. So, eh, eh. At least she's a free-to-play option now that can do that for orange teams. And then... Look, another Isis. Another free-to-play Isis, because she's the free-to-play protector. So, uh, changes greens to oranges, 80% chance to pierce for two turns, gives you 20 skill points. And then antagonist forces get 30% damage, and antagonist allies get 12% attack. She's not very good, to be perfectly honest. We, we've gone backwards. We just got the best free-to-play protector in Frey, who's really good. And then we come back to this, where she's not guaranteeing anything. She's changing one color to oranges. You're not going to use this Isis, really, ever. Which is just kind of an unfortunate thing.
But now let's check out the alt animations. Let me turn myself down and turn this volume up. Hi, then I'll go to the ground. I'll ブラックワーブレス。I mean, I think the animations look really good. The animations look good, the, the character models look really good. And they were drawn by Mitzvah, so he, uh... Mitzvah is the, the light novel artist for the, uh, the light novel of Slime itself. So that is cool that he gave both Shinsha and Cleesh new forms. I think that was shown somewhere in here. Okay, so here's, yeah, Mitzvah's design for the new form of Cleesh, and then Shinsha got hers, I think, in the JP stream. But that's pretty much all that the Global Dev Diary had. We're getting new story chapters starting on the 4th which I kind of found weird. Why didn't they come with the actual meta itself? But sure, we're going to get a bingo board for that, and then a half stamina campaign also starting on the 4th. So the bingos go until the 18th, and then the half stamina goes until November 5th. So that's going to go on quite a bit longer, and that's to also coincide with the third anniversary. Otherwise, the Global Dev Diary doesn't really have anything else they you know we've added primal or god damn it visions of coleus violet and commander hinata to the antagonist force which violet makes sense hinata i mean yeah sure yeah I, I i guess not my most favorite pick and then they talk about the changes to valor cup where you get one crystal per fight now instead of five crystals every time you do five fights and uh yeah that's about it so that's the global side the JP side has a bit more to offer in terms of things to talk about. We have skill fusions for the first anniversary Dark Shensha and the Earth Clayman. Uh, they're okay. I'll talk about them in a separate video than anything else. But then we have the beatdown battle example, and it's an AoE fight versus the Mirror Realm, Shion, Gopta, and Gabaru. This fight has pierce resistance, physical resistance, and they hit relatively hard. So you're meant to use a burst strategy to take that down. Sorry, excuse me. Oh, got the hiccups. All right. Um, I mean, we'll get into that when the actual meta comes out. But we do have one more announcement hidden in here that I got to find. So hold on. Oh, uh, here is the mitzvah art design for the new form of Shensha while we're still looking for that. But, oh, there it is. Right here. So this is talking about upcoming things that will change with the third anniversary, which is going to start on the 18th of October. So I said in, you know, in my spreadsheets and everything that it's somewhere around the 14th. It's now looking like October 18th will be the part one, quote unquote, of the third anniversary, which is still going to be the second half of this antagonist meta. So, uh, you know, we'll, we'll have Emils and Shinsha come out later today and then give us about a two week gap. So October 18th is when we'll see a double featured uh, banner, which will finish up the antagonist meta and will be the quote-unquote official start of the third anniversary but still October 28th which we also know is the true date that this starts because 
of the start dates for the banner itself, which I think says uh, it's somewhere else in here. Hold on. Found it. All right. So Shinsha, 927 to 1028. So 1028, 27th will be the start of the third anniversary with the triple feature unit band, the one that everyone should be summoning for. But the changes that I was attempting to talk about here that will happen on the 18th is that they're going to change some of the shops that exist in the game currently. So this top one right here is the Memory Stone Exchange lineup. And that, I believe, is referring to the regular shop and the 3, 4, 5, and 5 star EX bazaars where you can trade the dupes that you pull from summons and you can get you know memory shards here and tickets. The things that I do every, every month when it resets and I clear out the shop. So it looks like that these are going to get updated. The second bullet here is the Seeds of Growth shop, which is just another shop. So last time I got updated, we got the 10%er tickets, we've got the shards, these are the new things, pretty much this entire top row. I mean, it, it's pity that doesn't carry over. I wish they would just remove the shop and let pity carry over, but it looks like we're never going to get that. So they're going to make an update to this. I generally don't really buy anything out of here to begin with, so it, you know it's whatever. If they actually put like guaranteed tickets, EX tickets in here, I might be more inclined to spend some of this. And then the third bullet down here is various scout renewals. Which, I did record a video on it, but I never put it out. But it was put into the... Actually, no, it didn't. Never mind. I did other things. But they did say that they're going to add characters into the shot... Or update the general pool. Which, where is that? Uh, here we go. Characters add to certain recruits. So they're going to update pretty much all the ticket recruits with more characters. I assume this is going to bring in multiple EX metas into the free tickets and other ticket stuff. So that's what this is referring to. Otherwise, this stream doesn't really tell us a lot of information. Uh, they talk about the East Sky Chronicles game that I dropped. If you want to have a laugh, you could look at the global Valor Cup rankings for last season and uh, the simps. <laughs> The, uh, the simp wall, as, as they refer it to. They really went out of their way to do that. I was not part of this, by the way. I was like rank 11 or 12 or something. <laughs> I, I would not have changed my name, so they pushed me out. But that's that's about it. Uh, story quests, bingo missions coming. Shinsha and the Mills going to headline this team. You know, I, I really, one, I can't recommend it because we are a month away from the third anniversary. I can't recommend it because it's an orange meta and oranges are not favored heavily in this game. And I can't recommend it because the skills all are pretty limited. And Mills looks to be pretty good because he's universal. Rainbow orbs, oranges, skill points on oranges, guaranteed pierce with no limitation. Like Mills, I think is an okay protector. I don't know if he's better than New Year's Blessing Shion, but we'll have to we'll have to test him out a little bit later tonight, but shinsha has got restrictions, Cleesh has restrictions, Isis free-to-play protector is trash, so overall, I, I, you know, it is original character meta, which is cool, but still, like, you really shouldn't summon this close to the third anniversary, no matter what it is. This is just more and more bait, and they're gonna get you with the original characters that they haven't touched in months, or even years, or even ever, with a Mills. So, yeah, let me know what you guys think. But in 13 hours, we will be live streaming to summon four Cleesh and the Mills. So, hopefully, the terrible luck I had last month or last meta will give me good luck this month. Or maybe I can shaft it on this meta so I can get really good luck for the third anniversary. That's maybe what we should really be hoping for. But again, yeah, let me know what you guys think of this. That's it from me. Take it easy, and I will see you all later tonight.